Hello everyone, welcome back to another how-to video with Metronic. In this video, we will go through on how you can manage Metronic's plugins using Gulp. So before you start, make sure you have uh, Metronic already installed or purchased and installed into a computer. And what you're going to do here is we're going to open up our IDE and we will go through demo one. Now, when you're managing your plugins within Metronic, uh, there's probably a few things that you want to do, uh, or rather two things that you want to do. Uh, one is you want to add new uh, plugins or you want to remove plugins from your um, your project. So uh, in this video, we'll be talking about Gulp. So the thing that we need to um, look for when we want to manage our um, plugins within Metronic is to actually look at our Gulp config file. To find where it is, you just have to look into our theme and then go to uh, defaults and then you select a demo that you want. In this video, we'll talk about demo one. And then you just go to gulp.config. Now, once you're in here, um, if you watched our other video when we talked about the installation and how to get started with Metronic, we basically went through on what uh, each of these fields mean or what, what they do. Uh, but for this video, we want to basically manage our plugins. So what we need to do is we need to look into our uh, build plugins uh, um, uh, options here. Uh, we do have a mandatory list of plugins here. But uh, as mentioned in the previous video, since it's mandatory, we recommend you guys not to remove any plugins from the mandatory uh, field. Uh, we can uh, You can remove anything from the optional or from the custom. So the difference between um, this uh, optional and the custom is if you look into the root or not say the root, the parent of the optional is basically we have a base and we have a custom. Now a base is technically Metronic's um, global plugins or the global sets of plugins that gets bundled up. So everything within mandatory and optional will get bundled up into a single file called plugins.bundle. So this will be applied globally and you can just use it in any page anywhere within Metronic. And then custom is a little bit different. Custom is basically uh, a single independent plugin that you need to add into a page that needs it. So to show you an example, let's look into our dist and go to our index. And then what you do is you scroll all the way down and we look at the list of um, list of scripts or JS that we are in being, uh, that we are including into Metronic. Let's make it a little bit bigger. What we can see here is we have our global bundle and then our global scripts bundle. Scripts bundle is basically our scripts to you that we use to initialize the uh, plugin. Like you need to first install the plugin or include the plugin source into uh, into your project and then you need to of course write some script to initialize it or to manipulate the plugin to do whatever that you want the plugin to do. So that's the scripts and then we have individual um, individual plugins or custom plugins that we need to include to make certain things work. Like this is, we're including the full calendar, we're including uh, Google Maps, and that's it. So if you go back to our Gulp, so we have our global plugins here and individual plugins all here, like all from here all the way down to here. Okay. So now in this example, we want to first remove a plugin and then um, add that plugin back into Metronic. So in this example, we'll basically remove a uh, float, uh, float chart. So float, uh, float or float, mm, I'll call it float. So float chart is basically here, is within the customs. So how do we find flood chart being used within 
uh, the the demo is first we will need to open up our demo and see where the files are. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's navigate to float chart. There's our charts here. Flood charts. Okay, so if you can see, it's in components, charts, flood charts. So let's go back to our ID, go to components, charts, flood charts. So this is flood charts uh, HTML file. And in here, we see that we have our global plugins and we have flood bundle and then our initializing uh, script. So if you go into this, to remove a plugin is actually really, really simple. All you need to do is just delete this, like so. And save your gob config. Next, uh, we need to do is we need to remove this uh, few things. Uh, before that, let's just look at our uh, float chart and we notice that everything is working. Like, you know, everything is working fine. And now what we do is we are going to remove uh, flood charts and well, let's remove the comment as well. So we move the page script and also the include bundle. So delete that and save that. Now what we need to do next is we need to recompile Metronic. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our tools, open up our command prompt and run gulp to recompile our assets. All right, it's done. Let's look into our page, our flow chart page and refresh it. And if you notice that our charts are now gone, they're no longer working because we removed it. So that's basically how you remove uh, plugins from Metronic. Now we are removing custom plugins. Now, if you want to remove a global plugin, like say, if you go to our optionals and you do not want like a date range picker, you don't want that. All you need to do is just delete that and uh, recompile the assets. And um, of course, change the, uh, the HTML to make sure that you remove any um, plugins that are no longer there. So uh, for in this example, let's just move ahead and remove our date range picker, save that. And um, let's look for where's our date range picker. I think it's going to be in our form controls. There you go here. So this is our date range picker, something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. It's in our uh, CRUD forms widgets. So we go to CRUD forms widgets and date range picker. All right, um, scroll all the way to the bottom. We see this right here. This is a page script and we don't need to remove the global bundle because once we recompile it, um, it will recompile this file minus the date range picker that we just removed from the optional list. So let's go ahead and remove this file or this script, save that and recompile. Let's try it again. Okay, it's done and let's refresh this page. Refreshed as, as you can see, nothing is happening because we removed the plugin. So that's how you can easily remove the plug uh, plugins from Metronic using our GUP config file, um, either from either globally or um, from a single custom uh, custom plugin. So now to add plugins uh, into Metronic is uh, also very similar. We just have to reverse this process, but before we actually add a plugin, we need to 
download and install the source. Now, how do we download the source is just two ways to do it. First, you need to locate the plugin or find a plugin online somewhere that you want to include into your project. Once you found it, you need to view the documentation to see uh, if they have uh, the plugin is available within a package manager like npm or yarn, or you need to download the, the source files directly. So how we can do that is for this example, we can look into the let's say GitHub repo for um, date range picker, and let's also look at our float chart. Float chart where you here and float charts. Okay. And let's open up in the GitHub repo as well. All right, so now that we are in our in the in the date range picker GitHub, um, we need to first check if we can just clone it like that. Just download the whole thing, download the whole zip, and put it into your um, your project folder. Or we can find out whether this plugin is available via npm or they is available in any package manager. So to do that, we can actually just Google up um, say Bootstrap. Yep, there we go and then see it's right here all we need to do is just install this and we can just install it via yarn like yarn add bootstrap date range picker like so press enter and what it does is it will start adding uh, bootstrap date range picker into your node modules and once it's adding, once it's added into your node modules, all you need to do is include it into your config file. So what you need to do is first you need to declare the name for it. We bootstrap date range picker. And then we need to know whether the uh, the plugin has CSS files or it's only a script for JS files. We need to find that out. How do we do that is we wait for this to be done. So it's done. And we open up our node modules and we look for our uh, date range picker. Right there. And in here, we see a CSS and we see a JS. So we need to include them both. So just include them both like so. Can just uh, put some style and then um, enter your path and then scripts and then enter your path. So once you enter your path, all you need to do is just put the path in like this is your the config path to your node modules and then put. Uh, the file that you're going to be including into the bundle, the CSS, which is this file here, the JS file will be this file here. And in the same time, let's also include our uh, float chart. Let's go here, float chart is somewhere here, and then we just type in, oh, we need to install float. So to do that, we just need to yarn add float and then install it. It gets installed into your node modules and then it should look something like this because if you browse float, let's close this and go float here. So we have the main jQuery and then in here we have all this other stuff that may or may not be used. So you just include whatever you know source that you want from your plugin to bundle up into a float bundle. And then you save your bundle and you go to our bootstrap uh, date range picker and include it, uh, include the script back. Now to write your script, the examples for all our scripts will be actually located within our source. Uh, let's minimize this, go to source, go to assets, go to JS, and then you go to um, CRUD, you go to forms, you go to widgets and go this and basically we are setting like uh, initializing okay this element this element we are initializing with date range picker with a button and apply a certain class to it and similar with all our other demos so you need to write this file um, for yourself 
uh, relevant that's relevant for your plugin. So you just need to initialize a plugin with your scripts and then put it somewhere within your project. And what you need to do is just include that into your HTML. So to do that, you just have to type in like, you know, your simple script source equals the path to your plugin. Since we already have it, have an example before, it just looks like this. You're just basically just adding the this file, not oh, not this file. Uh, where's my JS file? This file, date range picker, this one, into our HTML. So save that. Let's go back, go back to our float and also similar. Once we already have our JS initialized, add that back in. But since uh, a float chart is a custom plugin. It's not a global plugin. We need to include the bundle as well, which is this file right here. That is going to be within the this plugins and custom. So if you go, no, we can't see it now because we didn't compile it yet. But let's just put that back in. Like so as you can see, it's just putting the exact bundle file and the initializing uh, initialization JS file back into the HTML. Save that, recompile, uh, rerun gulp on uh, Metronic. All right, that's done. Let's look at our float chart first. Let's do a quick refresh. And it's now back and working nicely. Back, back to our date range picker. As you can see, it's not working yet. Refresh. And now it's back. So. That's pretty much it for um, managing your plugins within Metronic. I hope you found this video informative. Uh, give us a thumbs up uh, if you did. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, so that next time when we release videos like this, you get an update. Um, uh, please like or follow us on our social media accounts like Twitter and Facebook. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care.